What is up ladies and gentlemen, Phil Brunel aka Darkside Phil here. Fuck off, you're gone, don't come back. Two of them accidentally looked up at their screen and said, what the fuck is that? And then, you know, their lives were changed forever. I did nothing wrong. Ha 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 thanks for the money, stupid fuck. None of the other shit that's said about me has been true. They're rich, I'm not. <laughs> you're right, I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face, I cop up to that one. Why am I toxic? 2019, a content creator going by the name of Pro Jared would find himself in controversy. DSP would take advantage of this because Pro Jared had previously slighted him with an insult on Twitter. DSP would tweet out, Pro tip for content creators, if you've done something worse than this, whether it's public or not yet, quit, because I'm still here and you won't be, and good luck living with that. He would include a picture from the time he was caught masturbating live on Twitch. This tweet would become popular and bring more attention to Phil than he was used to, encouraging him to make a video called Debunking 7 Years of Slander. DSP would be encouraged by the popularity of this tweet and believe this would be his only opportunity to clear his name. The reason I'm doing this is because in the past couple of days, the internet at large has finally kind of turned an eye to me for the first time in a major way in a long time in an actual positive light. Now, this video in stream is not going to be about that, all right? I'm not gonna be talking about how this other guy, this other content creator completely screwed up his life by doing messed up stuff. And basically I had two pretty epic looking tweets that yes, one of them was directly to him and one wasn't, it was more indirect, but two epic tweets that kind of went crazy on Twitter. One of which has like 6,000 likes, one has like over 17,000 likes and major content creators, including guys like Hee Hee Productions and PewDiePie. Uh, amongst others, have been, like, referencing me. Boogie said that it was his favorite tweet ever. This is the first time in years that anyone has really come out and said anything positive about me because, sadly, as you guys and gals know, if you are longtime fans of mine, um, there's a lot of bullshit and slander and all kinds of crap uh, about me all over the Internet, all right? And if they don't see that, you know, I basically take this opportunity to do something positive and kind of almost clear my name for the last seven years of slander that's been against me on YouTube in particular, but of course now it's all over the internet. I almost feel that sadly, all right, that sadly there's no, not going to be another opportunity to do it here is to basically take a lot of those things that common things, misconceptions about me, slanderous statements, memes, things about dark side Phil that have been said over the last seven years and kind of try to at least denounce them, debunk them, or at least tell you the truth about that situation. Now, you don't have to believe me, and the bottom line is there will be thousands of people out there that probably will never believe me no matter what I say and do anyway. There's nothing I can do about that, but at least I think this is a good place to start for those who are now maybe, oh, I heard about Dark Side Phil, he made these epic tweets, but now we hear negative stuff about him. This will finally be my opportunity to kind of clear the air about all that stuff and kind of start a clean slate almost. DSP would remind his audience and inform newcomers that he was still accepting donations. I will be accepting, you know, contributions during the stream as usual. Cheering, subbing, and tipping will all be allowed and everything. DSP would go on to say that he used to be an asshole, but now most of the things the tractors are saying are false. For seven years, I've been the butt of the internet's joke because of the way that I used to act seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. When, that the, the dawn of when I really had my highest popularity um, on YouTube, all right, I was an asshole. I'll openly admit that. And the bottom line is most of the really nasty things that has ever been said about me never had any factual basis. They were taken out of something that was skewed or something that had no actual concrete evidence, but people just believe it because it's been said so many times. And I'm not a person who's going to sit here on a stream and just talk about the negative shit constantly because I want to be a positive guy. I want to put out fun gameplay. I want to cover the new releases. I want to have cool throwback sessions. I don't want to my, my entire existence on the internet to be defending myself against people who are just saying ridiculous stuff. Since this episode is focused on DSP addressing detractors and their claims, I will also provide a detractor point of view. I will provide the evidence that detractors commonly point to whenever accusing Phil of any of the claims that DSP is attempting to debunk. The very first accusation DSP would address would be his racist jokes from his early days on YouTube. Uh, the first thing I want to start with, all right, is looking at a long, long, long time ago. Back before I ever live streamed, back before I ever did any direct capture, way back when, all right, um, I used to make racial jokes, okay? I did. I used to make racial jokes. Now, the racial jokes that I made, I used to call myself an equal opportunity offender, meaning I would make a joke 
about one culture or race and then another culture or race. But I would also make a joke about my own culture. You know, I'm Polish and Italian, and I would make those kind of jokes during gameplay as well. They will put a clip out there completely out of context of a playthrough and make one little... This is one joke Phil made in 2010. Look at what a horrible racist he is, right? The bottom line is, and this is the truth of the matter, in my lifetime, I've had more friends that were not white than white. The Jacksons will point out how common and egregious the racial jokes were. Wait a minute. I'm black. I can't swim. All right, that's a bad joke. That's a racially insensitive and stereotypical joke. Although, like most racially generalized humor, it's probably true. All right. Me. It's time. <laughs> He was talking about Hulk Hogan is the funniest shit ever. I swear to God, he accidentally calls Hulk Hogan a re. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be racist or anything. It's the funniest clip ever. You gotta watch it on YouTube. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space, and now look at this. Their greed has had the artifact turn everyone into necromorphs. Phil would admit making these anti-Semitic jokes was his biggest mistake, but he would also clarify that he watched a lot of Howard Stern at this time. DSP would then claim that the tractors got him banned through a fake campaign off the platform that he was on at the time. One of the biggest, and I will admit this to this, now I will publicly say this, one of the biggest mistakes that I actually feel that I made in my early career as a content creator is that I was making Nazi jokes, all right? They're not funny. I Now I know that. But the thing is, I used to be a very adamant listener to the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern, as you guys know, if you listen to him, is a very risque guy and he does very risque things. Howard Stern is Jewish. So for him to have Nazi jokes on his show kind of makes sense. I'm not Jewish. For me to make stupid Nazi jokes in videos that I've done and stuff is not smart. It's dumb. It's incredibly fucking stupid. And at least I'm proud to say... I haven't made a joke like that in nine years, okay? Some people actually to this day will say that stuff's funny. I, I don't think it is. I don't. I don't anymore. Back then I was more immature. Like I said, I, I you know, Howard Stern and everything all being in, in line with that stuff. I used to think that that stuff was funny, all right? I don't think it is um, anymore. I've grown up. I've matured. I'm not that kind of person anymore. What ended up happening was I put out that video, that Dead Space 2 demo video with that kind of jokes and commentary in it. And what happened was my trolls, which I've always had trolls, even back then when I was white hot popular, I had trolls. My trolls staged a campaign, which they later admitted publicly was a fake campaign. They mass emailed Blip TV, pretending to be hundreds of upset people, saying, how dare you have someone on your site who's making this kind of comedy and kind of, kind of commentary and stuff like that. Um, okay, and it sucks because you know, they got they got me, you know. Blip TV management saw these hundreds of complaints. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. They watched the video. They're like, okay, get rid of them. And they kicked me off the site. It sucks. I was, I was banned from Blip TV because of troll activities. The bottom line was the thing I got banned for is pretty heinous. I agree jokes about Nazis and shit is not funny. I, at that point in my life, nine years ago, was very immature and thought that it was. And thought that I would I emulate Howard Stern. I should be all right. But... Obviously, it's wrong. And the thing is, now, in 2019, I could come out and say, my God, that's so stupid. Why did I do that? But that's something always that people try to say. Phil was a racist. Phil always used to do videos that were racist content and stuff. No. In fact, it was a rarity when I did stuff like that. That's why it was funny. And every once in a while, I would go out of control and do stuff like that. But now, in the modern era, I can fess up to it and tell you guys I'm not like that anymore. I realize how stupid and, and dumb that shit was. One of the key things that DSP had said was that he didn't find those jokes funny anymore. And he made those nine years ago, back in 2010. Now, this is true for some of those jokes as they were made in 2010 videos. Even though DSP was banned from this platform in 2010, he would continue to make racial jokes years later. In China, they say, Chiggy Chang Wang Charlie Chan Chika Chaka Chaka Cha. Shut the fuck up. The Red Guard. Well, this guy's got an afro. Look at this. <laughs> they call him the brother class. Yo. <laughs> By 2015, DSP would stop making as many racial jokes, but continue to make jokes that could be considered hate speech. The jokes he would continue to make could be viewed as transphobic and homophobic. And Japanese tranny. Unless that's not supposed to be a tranny, it's supposed to actually be a roided chick. I have no idea. <clears throat> I want to watch a drama vlog. Then you go on YouTube. Ugh, I want to watch some free. And insult some homo. <laughs> you go on YouTube. 
In a video in 2019, DSP would say he can't say homophobic slurs anymore because he's not allowed to. Not that he shouldn't. This would imply that he would keep using them if he was allowed to. We're not sleeping together, you uh, fucking freeze! Wow. <laughs> I can't say that anymore. That's why we got a room with a giant bed, a pull-out bed out here. Can't say that anymore. Shows up tonight, we can all sleep and have lots of space between each other. We will not be spooning each other. Can't say that anymore. Not allowed. Ten years ago, it was okay. Now it's not a joke. It's not allowed. Can't say that anymore. <clears throat> he would address another controversial topic in his life, Panda Lee. Now, also going in line with going way back when, ladies and gentlemen, um, in 2012, I made public my relationship with a, a woman at that time who was my girlfriend, okay? And she very much became a part of my content. And there's always been lies and slander and complete horrific nonsense regarding my relationship with Panda Lee, which is horseshit. And the thing is, it's in my past. I mean, I... We, okay. So, tonight, for the first time ever, I'm debunking this bullshit, all right? The first thing that everyone fucking says to me is that, Phil, you first met Panda Lee when she was underage. She was under the age of 18. When you first started talking to her, you were grooming her so that you would finally go out with her and all this shit. And all of that is complete and utter fucking bullshit nonsense. False. The truth of the matter is that back then, this was a different era, all right? It really was. It was a different era of YouTube. Um, and back then, people used to use YouTube private messaging. I don't, don't even use that anymore. So, she actually as a fan a viewer private messaged me on my dsp gaming channel i believe the very first date was that it was like like november of 2011 november of 2011 they want to hurt me basically but no the truth of the matter is i never ever spoke with with her until she was 18 years old she messaged me not the other way she messaged me on youtube when she was 18 and we talked for months and then eventually we started dating for a while until it got more serious years later like i said and then we moved in together in 2014 you know in reality it's the thing is where's the evidence there's no evidence of anything here of what any people have said about this because it doesn't exist it's not true and Ali and dsp would have an 11 year age gap between them the tractors would suspect DSP had spoken to Panda Lee prior to her turning 18 because of how recent she had become 18. Panda Lee had turned 18 in late August and Phil would say they came into contact in November. In the comment sections of his videos there would be claims that he had spoken to her while she was under the age of 18 but these could not be validated. Panda Lee has not spoken out on this subject and there would be very little tangible evidence being able to support these accusations. In the end, due to their age gap and the timing of their communication, this would continue to draw suspicious eyes. DSP would then address the accusations that he turned Panda Lee's medical emergency into content for his podcast. But there was one particular day when I was streaming, I believe I was doing like a podcast, and I get a call, all right? The call is from my ex's job saying, your ex, you know, had a medical issue and we need you to come pick her up. And I'm like, well, first of all, she's my ex. We don't go out anymore. So why am I getting this call? So apparently there was no one else. None of her friends wanted to help her or whatever. I don't know the deal. I don't know the truth of the matter behind the scenes at all. Okay. So I was like, well, I, I guess I'll do the nice thing. I'll be the nice guy. I'll go and get her and figure out what the hell's going on. By the time that I had gotten to her job, I had to pay for an Uber and everything. By the time that I got to her job, she was already at the hospital. So I took the car because she, by the way, I was still letting her drive my car to go, despite the fact that we were broken up. She was still driving my car. I was that nice of a guy. DSP was somewhat inconsistent with this statement as now he's saying that he was being the nice guy and going to go pick her up. This would come across as him not knowing she wouldn't be there at the time and him just trying to be the nice guy. But at the time of the podcast, DSP would say that he had called her and told her to leave the keys with the manager and he would meet her at the hospital after picking up the cur. I called her cell phone to see what was going on and she answered, which I didn't expect she would answer. I was like, okay. So I called the cell phone and she's like, you know, I'm here with the paramedics. They're going to take me to the hospital because it's so bad. Um, and I said, all right, well, here's what you do. Leave the keys with your manager, because what I'll do is I'll take a taxi to there, I'll get the keys, I'll drive from your job to the hospital, and I'll meet you at the hospital, okay? Because <laughs> we can't, we leave the car, now we can't get anywhere, right? If I think just, if I at the time of the podcast, DSP would rant about how much time they wasted and how much this was going to cost. 
I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we don't know what the bill is because we don't have it yet. They're going to mail it, obviously. I guarantee you it's going to be like a thousand bucks. I'm not even exaggerating. I guarantee you that bill's going to fucking show up and it's going to be anywhere between 500 to a thousand bucks. I guarantee it. Yeah, she has insurance. She actually is covered in insurance because uh, she's already under the plan of her, her mother. But in this video, DSP would then say that he was really just upset about how much she was going to have to pay. The thing is, again, we, we had been broken up and it wasn't publicly disclosed. So I couldn't tell all you guys that this was things that I was upset about because she was going to get billed for it. I knew she was going to get completely ripped off for this whole hospital stay. That's what I was angry about at the time, but I couldn't disclose that to you guys because I was talking about like, we, 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 like we're going to get billed. In reality, it's all on her. And you know, she has a job, she works at you know, a job where I know it's going to be hard for her to pay thousands of dollars of bills for a hospital stay and shit. This would be some inconsistencies in this story, but this wasn't the main issue with the event. The main accusation would be that DSP had used Panda Lee's medical emergency for content without her permission. He would reject these claims saying he had permission from Panda Lee herself. When I came back home, she was all zonked out or whatever. And she's like, ah, you're going to go on your stream now and tell everyone about the story, right? I was like, of course I am, as long as it's okay with you. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. So I did. I went, I came back. I did a stream where I explained exactly what I just told you guys. The all I saw on the internet was slant. Phil, without permission, went online and disclosed a medical issue with his girlfriend slash fiance, because at the time we were, we were supposedly engaged, even though we had broken up, people thought we were still engaged, um, and gave all her medical history to everyone on the internet, and then said that he's not giving permission for her to ever have an ambulance come and pick her up ever again, that from now on, no, no one should ever call the emergency line, but instead they should just hand her a pill and leave her alone. Like, what the fuck? Where did you get that from the story that I told? Like, that's not even close to what happened. All right. I was concerned that here's someone who I'm already broken up with. I went out of my way to help her. I didn't have to. She wasn't, we weren't together anymore, but I went out of my fucking way to go help her. All right. And I basically get slammed for having my concerns over her financial well-being because I know she's going to get a giant bill from the hospital when they didn't do anything. Demanded she never go to a hospital ever again. Instead, they just give her a pill and leave her where they found her. How could I have made that demand when we were broken up? No. I didn't ever disclose any medical information without permission. No, none of this shit ever happened. It's complete bullshit. Um, and the evidence has always been on the internet. But people don't want to look at the evidence. They just want to listen to the slander. Okay? This would bring into the question if she could really give permission to Phil to talk about her medical condition while in that state of mind. Even though she may have given permission, she may have not been in the right state of mind because DSP himself would claim that she was zonked out and loopy. When I came back home, she was all zonked out or whatever. And she's like, ah, you're going to go on your stream now and tell everyone about the story, right? I was like, of course I am, as long as it's okay with you. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. So I did. I went, I came back, I did a stream where I explained exactly what I just told you guys. But we don't recommend you do that all the time because as you can see, you are tired and loopy and you don't want to be that all the time, right? She's zonked out. She's sleeping, you know, in the room because of, you know, everything. She's still on the, the pills that made her all loopy or whatever. After the breakup, Panda Lee seems to be distancing herself rarely, if at all, talking about him. DSP would then go on to address the accusations that he didn't pay his friends. Let's talk a little bit about Project 7. Because I hate to tell you guys this, but I've already addressed this before. I will now tell you guys, he was handsomely paid. Handsomely paid for all of that stuff. When we first started, he got paid 50% of everything that we made money on. He, made ha he got half of what I made. So every Saturday, John comes over. If we made a ridiculous amount of money on what we did that day, he got half, okay? That's just me being very transparent here. He always got half. I felt that was fair. Even though he could say, oh, well, Phil should make more because he's the YouTuber and he's the one who's putting the content up and doing the uploading work and he's the one who has the internet presence and all of that. I didn't care. I wanted him to get make half because I cared that much about him being being my friend and coming and doing this fun creative stuff together and I wanted him to financially have some help and stuff so I gave him half all right now sadly what ended up happening was later on with with my relationship with machinima my old YouTube partnership company so then what John and I did is we would say okay let's figure out together a fair amount of money 
for you to come do this every week because we can't figure out the actual half anymore. It's not even possible to figure it out. Instead, let's just say, okay, let's make an arrangement where every time you come visit and we do this co-op work together, I'll pay you this amount of money. And that's what we did probably for the last two years. In part five of this documentary, we've already gone to death about Project 7 and his payment to John Rambo and various friends throughout the project. To summarize, DSP was giving John Rambo 50% of the ad revenue for the very first month, but then no royalties for any months afterwards. It would eventually switch to a flat fee where DSP wanted to offer John Rambo $250 per week, but John Rambo would come out with the first offer at $100 per week. Instead of going with the $250 he intended to give John Rambo, he would undercut him with the $100 he had offered. Um, and we were trying to guess how much money videos are making or whatever, and... John, after like a, a month of trying to guess and, and, you know, having difficulty doing it, said, all right, forget it. He's like, here's what we're going to do. Just pay me $100 a week. And I even said to him, I said, are you sure that's what you want? I, I, in my head, I had a ballpark number. I wanted to pay him around $250 a week to come do what he did because it was Smart Guys, the commentary show. And it was all the co-op we were doing. And I knew that he was driving. I knew it was gas cost involved both ways. He lived in New York, New York, the state. I live in Connecticut. There's exorbitant amounts of gas cost there. Probably he was paying $20, $30, I would think, every couple of weeks for gas just for the trip. So I wanted to pay him more. That was the ballpark I, number I had in my head. It was around $250 a week, okay? And he said, no, I just want the 100 All right. That's our agreement. We're going to do the 100 By the way, I never offered him the 250 I got to clarify because now it's not, now I'm misconstruing it in a wrong way. Bullshit. Bad on you, Phil. Bad Phil. I got to call myself out on bullshit from now on. Bad Phil. I didn't offer him the 250 I asked him what he wanted, and he said 100 The 250 was a number in my mind. I never said it. I feel bad now because I said that. That's a lie. That didn't happen. He wanted 100 I said, I will give you what you want. DSP would then address the accusations that he turned his deceased friends into content for his podcast. Phil made money off of his dead friends. And there were two shows in particular, all right, where I talked about and did tributes to two friends of mine who had passed away. And then after, the, after I finished the podcast, people say, you made money off your dead friend's memories. What? Now, that podcast was over two hours long, and probably about a half an hour was the, the, the tribute to my friend T. There were many other topics and things discussed on the show. So you're telling me because there was a segment on the show that was a shout-out to my, de my deceased friend, that that means that I made money off of the fr the, my friend because it was a monetized video. I just gotten wind from a few people who had texted me and said, Phil, Scott passed away. It's really sad. So I decided on a podcast to do a very small segment where I discussed the passing of you know him and saying you know rest in peace and he was a good guy and I told a couple jokes about things and stuff that I experiences that I had had with him. That wasn't even a long segment. I think if I remember correctly, that was like 15 minutes if on other hand a two plus hour podcast. And again the same slander. Phil made money off of his deceased friends. It's like are you fucking? You've got to be brain dead to think that that's the true thing. I didn't make a fucking single a, a video just about it and monetize the video. It was a small tribute in a large show to someone who went, meant something to me in my life. And because it was a monetized video, for some reason, I'm the fucking devil because I made money on a dead friend. It's insanity. It really is insanity, okay? The first time DSP did this, it would almost take up half the podcast. DSP's second tribute would indeed last less than 15 minutes. But the issue would remain the same as DSP included these tributes in monetized videos instead of making standalone videos paying tribute to his deceased friends. The next issue he would address was about the time he said he would pimp slap a child. I wanted to hit an 11 year old girl. You're right. I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face. I cop up to that one. No, what the fuck are you talking about? This all spawned from two years ago. I was playing this stupid VR chat thing, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what it is, um, what it's supposed to be. And there was a girl on there who obviously should not have been playing VR chat unsupervised. You could tell she was probably like 11 years old, probably accurate. That's about how old she sounded. Why? There was a girl who I walked into a room and literally just became an insane brat insulting me and saying nasty shit to me. I didn't even say a word. And she was saying like nasty shit direct to me. I was like, damn, you know, that girl needs a fucking smack or something. I don't even remember exactly what I said, but it was a reactionary thing basically saying, you know, she needs, she, her, she needs a smack because if that was me in my day when I was growing up and I was a kid, if I acted like that, my parents would smack me right in the head.
that's just how it was back then. You know, today, God forbid anyone ever touch a kid, but back then that's how it was. You get disciplined for acting like a shithead to people. Um, you know, so I made a comment, off the cuff comment about that. It wasn't to the kid, by the way. It was a private comment. It wasn't like I ran up to the kid's face and insulted the kid. It was just to my streaming audience. I said, damn, you know, that girl deserves a smack for acting like that. And they twisted that into Phil wants to beat up an 11-year-old girl. It was an off-the-cuff comment. You're, you, it's stupidity. It's absolute stupidity that pe things that people say and twist the shit into. Okay? Um. Though he did not say this to the child themselves, he would say he would have pimp-slapped them if this was real life to his audience of hundreds. He would also call the child a bitch of a kid. Can you please go in the waiting room? Sure, where is the waiting room? Right behind you, idiot. You click on that. You didn't have to call me an idiot. I just walked in the door. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, if you look around, you would have been able to know. It literally says waiting room on top of it. Wow. You're quite rude. Wow. I'm 11. You're 11? Yes. And your parents bought you a gaming PC? What's wrong with this picture? You click on it, just so you know. You click on it. Oh. Good. Now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. <laughs> I would have fucking pimp slapped that shit out of that. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway. In November of 2018, DSP would say he needed $16,000. After months of receiving thousands of dollars of donations, DSP would then say in March of 2019 that he now needed over $17,000 to pay his taxes and his tax attorney. This would bring up the question of where did the money go, and DSP, when asked about this, would insult the viewer. New phase of creation, you obviously have not listened to a word that I fucking said. I said that the total that I just told all of you is after any money I have left over from Emerald 7. You need to open your ears because I know it's people like you who basically start shit. Oh, well, Phil didn't say, oh, what did he do with all that money? I just explained that. I just said after all the money I have left over, this is the total left. So open your fucking ears because see, people like you do piss me off when you start. I just explained it and now you act like I never said it. And then people will have weird conspiracy theories about where the money went. Okay, so stop it. Listen. Listen the fuck up. Jesus Christ. Okay. The SP would debunk this by saying the money went to the right places. One of the biggest misconceptions about this is that when I ask for help, that I go and I blow money on stuff, and that's not the case at all. Everything that I've ever asked you guys for has gone exactly towards what I said it was going to be. All right. In 2015, DSP promised he would revive Project 7, a previous series he had done, if they hit a Patreon goal. That Patreon goal was hit, but DSP would never fulfill his end of the deal. DSP would debunk this by saying he never promised Project 7 that it was supposed to be a Project 7 trailer, and that people told him not to do it because they wanted to see him play more games. So the first, first time around, we got to talk about this one, because this one goes years back too. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Every statement in that is false. All right? Besides maybe my name. Stole? I didn't steal anything. What they're talking about is a Patreon goal level that was hit for one month in the summer of like 2015, maybe it was 2016, but I'm almost positive it was as far back as 2015. Not stole, it was raised v legitimately via a Patreon goal level, all right? Fan donations, they weren't fan donations, they were Patreon contributions, that's different, that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Wrong, it wasn't for a Project 7 reboot. It was for me to take some time out that month to do a Project 7 reboot trailer trailer a trailer that was probably going to be 30 seconds long okay so for years i've been slandered being told that you stole money from your viewers for a project 7 reboot and none of that statement is true at all if i remember correctly it was like a tier three goal so we had already hit two goals below it so it was probably something like, and I'm just, I have no idea if this is actually what it was at this point. So don't, please don't take this as a fact. I'm going to estimate it was like, the goal was from 450 to $800. So if we raised those 350 extra dollars, I would make the trailer. So essentially what you're saying is 
$350 raised to pay for my time that I'm not going to be making videos to make up for those lost videos because I raised it via Patreon. I'm going to work on a Project 7 train. And the reason it didn't happen is because two reasons. Number one, because that summer, there was a lot of other stuff going on. And people actually knew there was a very busy gaming season coming up that fall with lots of hot new releases they wanted to see me play. But during the summer, there were other games that had been coming out that people wanted to see me play and complete before the fall season hit. And I actually publicly asked my viewers, do you guys want to see the Project 7 trailer that, you know, from Patreon? Or you would rather see me do all this other stuff? And publicly, the consensus was, do the other stuff. We don't really care about the Project 7 trailer. Now, of course, you're absolutely right. I didn't make the trailer. I 100% will tell you, I didn't make the Project 7 trailer. I never made it. But it was because my viewers at the time were telling me not to. That it was a bad goal. I should have never done it. I should have been doing other stuff. That's what they wanted to see me do. So I did what my viewership told me to do. And to this day, people still tell me I stole money... And didn't do Project 7 again, even though none of that was promised. It was for a 30-second trailer, no money was stolen, and I actually gave it back kind of the next month via lowering all the goals. Now, the you would say in his Patreon goal that he wanted to relaunch to his very old series, Project 7, for quite some time, and if they hit that goal, he would work on the renewal of Project 7 with the hope that he'll have something at the end of the month. Due to the vagueness of the post, this could mean the revival of Project 7 as a series or just simply a trailer because he would leave it open-ended saying he wanted to have something to show for it by the end of the month. But if someone pledged $75, he promised they could be in a future episode of Project 7 indicating that this was supposed to be a series or revival. The SP may have intended it to be a Project 7 trailer, but with his Patreon rooted this way, it would lead people to believe this was a revival of Project 7. To add on to this, DSP will refuse to refund people's money because he doesn't know who pledged just for Project 7. The other thing is that um, some people said, why didn't I just refund all the money? You can't. The reason being was we, there's no way to tell who pledged on Patreon just to see Project 7. It's not like a, a crowdfunded, um, it's not like a GoFundMe. You know, when you go to a Kickstarter and you want to finance a campaign, oh, I paid you five bucks because I want to see you make a video game, right? That's not how it is. People give me Patreon money because just in general, some people just like the content I put out. Some people are actually directly pledging to get a perk level, a reward level. Some people want a goal to be hit. So they're all per pledging for different reasons. You can't specifically say, okay, well, I had a thousand people who pledged to my Patreon this month. Gee, I wonder how many actually pledged just to see the Project 7 reboot. How do I refund them specifically their money? You can't. It's impossible. It's just a stupid thing that kids would suggest is like, oh, see, Phil didn't refund any money. Therefore, that's why he stole the money. You can't refund the money, dumbass. But that's the thing. They'll say that stupid shit just to make me look bad. Okay. So, all right. Now, what I did, I didn't just say, oh, here's 350 extra dollars. Let me just pocket that. No, what I actually did is the next month on Patreon, I lowered all the Patreon goals by 350 bucks. I said, instead of having a tier one goal at 250, we're just going to do a special goal just to start. And then the next goal will be like 150. The next goal is 400. So I lowered everything by 300, 350 bucks. Again, these are not correct. The SP would then address the accusations that he spent money flying in his then girlfriend, Kat. He would debunk this by saying every time Kat visited it, it was before he announced his tax problem in November of 2017. Well, people say to this day, Phil raised all that money for the taxes so he could secretly fly his new girlfriend across the country to spend time with him. Now let's look at the timeline. Hmm. Well, the first time that Kat came to visit me was the summer of 2017. The second time she came to visit me was the fall, which I believe was October of 2017, because she actually helped me pick out my Halloween costume for the Halloween special that I did that year. I announced my financial dilemma about the state taxes in Thanksgiving of 2017. So obviously what Phil did is he announced it so he could raise funds go back in time and pay for the two visits beforehand. You fucking dumbasses. You you talk out of your fucking asses about this stuff and make the most crazy, controversial, insane theories that make no fucking sense. It's such a weird conspiracy. Like, how the fuck do you think that money that I talked about and raised later in the year paid for the trips that happened earlier, you fucking buffoons? Um, all right, uh, continuing on here. Um, so yeah, it's insanity that people say that I lied about taxes to raise money to fly Kat out here to spend time with me. She flew out here to visit me before I ever even announced my tax problems. 
There's no fucking way that could have ever happened. And the timeline is there. You can see that when the video came out and when I started talking about her and everything, revealing stuff about her, it's horseshit. It doesn't make any sense what people are saying. They're out of their minds. But this would be false because DSP would announce in December that he was having trouble with flight tickets that he bought for his girlfriend. This would show that DSP was spending money on travel costs to fly in his girlfriend while he was in a financial crisis and asking his fans for money. The next issue that DSP would address was that he spent fan donations on his wedding. Now, of course, the, the latest controversy was I had this issue with my federal taxes and I, um, uh, you know, I told you guys I needed help and I did a couple marathon streams to raise money with the federal taxes and you guys, between you guys helping me and my parents helping me, I raised enough money to qualify for this, uh, this payment plan for the taxes that I didn't pay in the last year. And that's in process right now. Okay. That's all in process. All that being said, all right. Um, I raised funds for these federal taxes before the trip out there. All right. And all of a sudden it's Phil took all that money for the taxes and he spent it on his wedding. All right. I just want you to think how stupid this sounds. The week before, the week before I flew to Connecticut to get married and spend time with my parents, I raised money to pay for the wedding. On what fucking planet do you think that you pay for a wedding the day that it happens? I mean... <laughs> you know, that's ins it's insane that these people just think that, like, Phil had a tax, a fake tax crisis and immediately spent the money to pay for his trip to Connecticut. So the plane tickets I bought the night before, apparently, is just stupid. It doesn't make any sense, the things that they say, but this is what I mean, like... Notably, before going on this trip, DSP would receive over $1,000, and he would say that he bought plane tickets. So the plane tickets I bought the night before, apparently... DSP was now stating that he paid for the plane tickets, but he previously said that his parents were paying for everything, so his fans' money wouldn't go to this at all. Um, and immediately you get a dickhead like ITG Jake. I'm gonna read it because I've had enough and he's permanently banned now. Do you want us to give you money to see your parents? Fuck you, Jake. How about that? Fuck you. No. Because you don't wait, wait five seconds to let me finish what I'm saying. Now not only are you permanently banned, but now we all get to laugh at you publicly for being an insensitive piece of fucking shit. When I'm bearing my heart to the fucking stream, go fuck yourself. No, I'm not asking anyone for money to go to Connecticut to see my parents. In fact, it's the actual complete polar opposite situation, okay? <clears throat> so just for pure transparency here, I and Kat will be paying none of this trip. If and when it happens, we're hoping it will happen. Um, I already talked to my parents. They said, we're going to take care of it. We understand your financial situation. We couldn't ask for you to pay uh, for any of this stuff. The SP would then read off a list of everything he has debunked so far on this stream. I'm just going to read them again. Are you guys ready? Threw his fiance under the bus and turned her private medical issue into a drama stream. Didn't happen. Demanded she never go to a hospital again and said that they give her a pill and leave her where they found her. Didn't happen. Um, lied about money issues for a year. Not stop begging for cash while flying a girl out uh, to see him. Didn't happen. Used tax donations to, to move the woman in with him. Didn't happen. Used tax donations to marry the woman. Didn't happen. Stole fan donations that went towards the Project 7 reboot. Didn't happen. Refused to pay friends for the work they did only used to make money and, and you only used them to make money and make more off of dead friends until he lost them all. Didn't happen. Uh, wants to hit an 11-year-old girl. Didn't happen. Um, groomed two fangirls and used them for sex and extra money. Oh. Didn't happen. But the one that I really didn't say yet. This is the one that gets, that gets me the most. Everyone's a paid shill tweet. Okay? Apparently, last year I put out a tweet that said everyone's a paid shill. That's not what happened. It didn't happen would be DSP's main evidence to debunk everything during this stream. DSP would then take some responsibility for the time he called people paid shills for having early access to a game. Together, you know, because we've lived, we, at that point we'd only lived together for a few months, I think. And it was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. She got sick and we couldn't do anything because she was just awful sick. And here I am feeling fucking miserable. And I'm like, this sucks. We had planned this for a while. I knew. I was like, this is it. I know I can't take any more time off of work after this to do anything. So it was just a really terrible time where it's like, we're supposed to be spending time. Instead, I'm sitting here with my with my girlfriend who's miserable as hell. 
and it sucked. And I was really agitated, all right? And when this happened, I was contacted by a few fans who were like, Phil, are you aware that people are playing State of Decay 2 and we whole week early on Twitch? And, you know, you go to their streams and people are actually tossing them thousands of dollars on these streams for them, you know, because basically they're showing off these games early. And I'm like, it really rubbed me the wrong way. All right. And I put out a tweet that was really stupid, that was worded incorrectly, that if you just read it for what it was, it said something that was not what I was meaning to say. All right. What I wanted to say was I 100% disagree with the practice of game publishers and developers putting out video games where they put them out early for special influencers. But the tweet I put out was completely wrong. The tweet that I put out said something like, everyone who's playing State of Decay 2 early right now is a paid shill, and you shouldn't support their content. You should wait for people who are going to play it legit when it comes out on Friday. By saying it that way, not only did I insult a whole group of people who I didn't mean to criticize game journalists who had been playing it early to legitimately put out game reviews later in the week, but I also made myself look like a tremendous ass because I didn't elaborate on the topic, and everyone legitimately destroyed me during this week when I was supposed to be off from doing anything game-related because I was pissed off at a situation at home. I made a stupid tweet. And you know what? I'll 100% fess up to it. 100%. That's on me. I fucked up. That was a mistake that I made for sure. Out of all the things that we just listed, that actually happened. I fucked up. I made a bad tweet. It was dumb, and I apologize for it, and I hopefully won't do stupid shit like that again because it was just so dumb. I, I It was a completely misworded tweet that had nothing to do with the actual idea that I was trying to portray. Though this would be somewhat confusing, as DSP had previously said that was his depression that made him say that. And I know that. I know that putting that out on Twitter is going to cause trouble. I know that logically in this head. I know that's stupid, you know, but I did it anyway. And it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a mistake that I put that on fucking Twitter. No, sir, it wasn't. That was my depression pulling me out of a positive moment of my life at that very moment. This would be another DSP inconsistency where he had previously blamed his depression on the situation. Now he's blaming that he was pissed off because his girlfriend was sick. DSP would then address his masturbation incident from 2016. He would explain that he was depressed and his previous relationship with his girlfriend at the time was falling apart. He would then address the accusations that he planned it to get a boost in views. It's my incident. All right. It's my incident where in 20, uh, wow, in 2016, I accidentally showed something on stream I didn't mean to show, all right? And for the first time ever, I can disclose to you what really happened um, behind the scenes and why it happened and how dumb it was. I mean, I'm a complete bonehead for doing it. I've already fessed up to doing it a million times. The bottom line was at that point in my relationship with my ex, things were not going well. Things were starting to fall apart at the seams. There was a lot of behind the scenes stress and we were not getting along at all. It was to the point where like we were living together as roommates, but there was no love there anymore. It was kind of just like we're going through the motions to say that we're together, but we weren't really doing anything that was anything fun or interesting together. And we really, a lot of the things that we had loved to do weren't fun anymore. Um, you know what I mean? I was depressed. Um, and it was a time when there was no intimacy to speak of whatsoever and I was an idiot I was a complete idiot and I did something really stupid behind the scenes I shouldn't have done why the hell of all the time not to say that there's anything wrong with someone doing doing that in their own private space why the fuck was I doing it when a pre-stream was running right when I had a fucking things running here at the beginning of the street it's stupid as fuck all right, it was the dumb, one of the dumbest, it had to be the dumbest thing I've ever done. I mean, seriously, the dumbest thing I've ever fucking done. It had to have been. Um, the things that they say about it are such complete horseshit misconceptions that I can't, first of all, Phil planned it. What? Phil planned it. Phil intentionally did that. On what world do you think that there would be any benefit from me planning out something like that and purposely doing it. 
You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What what benefit would there have been to me planning out and doing something like that intentionally? I mean, think about the insane risk involved. I could have lost my livelihood. I could have lost my ability to stream on you on Twitch and, and YouTube and make YouTube videos. I could have lost. Why would I have planned something like this? I just I don't understand. Um, at all, at all. You would address the accusation that he had masturbated in front of thousands of children. Number two, some people say, oh, well, you know, Phil did it. He masturbated in front of thousands of children. What? First of all, when do I have thousands of children on my stream ever? Never. When do I have thousands of people on my stream? Never. When, what the fuck are you talking about? It was 70 people who were early to stream and probably two of them accidentally looked up at their screen and said, what the fuck is that? And then, you know, their lives were changed forever, but... Though DSP addresses this, this doesn't seem like an actual accusation made by detractors and stems from a meme from one detractor encounter. Oh, I yeah, I think that's Mark said Phil. He I'm was the guy that got caught for masturbating in front of children. Yeah, okay, that's so he, he was caught masturbating. I think he's like 35 <laughs> years old. Oh my god. Yeah, he was masturbating in front of children. That's on right. On YouTube yeah. live stream. Hilarious. He's like he's a, he's a pervert or something. I think he's a That's right, I'm a huge something. pervert, guys. That's all I do. I just masturbate constantly in front of children. You're absolutely right. <laughs> That's you what I'm known caught, for. You got exposed for doing that. That's, I got pro That's completely like, exposed. Absolutely. Yeah, you did. I, you didn't even know the camera was on. You know every inch of my dick and balls. Are you the guy? Are you the guy? You know every inch of my dick and balls. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. And he's just like so excited that he gets to do this on a stream. He's like, wow, you're the guy. Yeah, you're 35 and you're the guy. Yeah. He's probably beating off right now. <laughs> he's probably beating off. Oh, yeah, I got to say that on the internet. Yeah. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> Essentially, DSP's reaction to this keeps the meme alive, making him believe it's an actual accusation, but in reality, it's probably just a meme used by detractors. DSP would receive criticism during the livestream that he didn't debunk anything at all because he didn't provide evidence. Most of the stream, he just simply said, it didn't happen, it isn't true. The truth is that, like I said, a lot of them back in the day when it used to be about gameplay or whatever would be based off of a snippet of truth here or there. But the things that I've just talked about are the major things that people always say, and they're all false. They're literally, every one of them is a lie. And if any of the, one of these is the reasons why you don't like Darkside Phil, you have been basing your negativity towards me on lies that were spun so people could get attention and clickbait for their videos and clickbait for their streams. And none of it was ever true or based on reality and you, you fell for it, you know? Um, and they're saying in the stream chat right now, okay, um, and saying, you didn't prove any anything tonight. Where's the concrete evidence? What evidence do you want? Uh, my ex's birthday was always public knowledge. You could have looked it up anywhere and, and known um, all about it. You could have known all the fuck about it. It's, it's, it's always been public knowledge. I've told you about the behind the scenes stuff years ago. The thing is just people don't believe me. So they make up their own shit. It's like there's never... Uh, in what situations do you take pictures of every possible thing that happened? Do you write down... Like I said, Project 7, we didn't have any contracts in place. There's no way you could prove or disprove any of it. DSP would say he doesn't have any real evidence that he could show to prove his innocence. But years later, he would admit that he has emails from around this time that could provide some insight into the situation with Project 7. They literally sent me an email that says, I read it last night. DSP would not show these emails due to his privacy concerns. It can be speculated by detractors if these emails really do exist, then these emails could potentially show Phil in a boost light and that's why he's not showing them. It seems like DSP may have some evidence, but he's not willing to show them, indicating that it may not prove his innocence after all. DSP would then state if he's done all these horrendous things, why hasn't he been arrested or banned off the platform yet? You have to be logical humans and realize for yourselves that you have to have a little ounce of, of just fucking intelligence and maturity in your heads to realize that if all this shit has been said about Phil all these years, yet Phil's still here, he's still on YouTube, he's still on Twitch, he's never been, you know, banned or anything from any of these places, and he's not arrested for shit, and, you know, he's got a loving wife, why would any of these things have happened if these horrendous things that people say about me were fucking true? 
And the bottom line is they're not. It's people making shit up to get clickbait on their own shit. And you fell for it. If you believe any of that shit, you are gullible. You fell for something with no evidence. Pure speculation. Because there couldn't have been evidence of something that's not true. And you bought it. Herc, line, and sinker. And you're the one who created the problem with these people who literally just say whatever they want. And you will, you know, if you're that gullible, I don't know what else to say, man. Like, what, you know, it's insanity. The bottom line is, for as much as you say, well, there's no evidence, Phil, of what you said. Well, guess what? There's no evidence of any of the shit that these people say about me because it's not true. They will never show you a concrete lick of evidence because they can't because it doesn't exist. You know what I mean? If they did, they would show it and then that would be it. If definitively I had done the horrible things, I would have been banned from YouTube, banned from Twitch, banned from Twitter, banned from the internet, banned from the earth, banned from the Milky Way, launched off into a black hole, shot across, you know, the old plane of existence and had all my molecules ripped apart at the seams because how could someone so horrible as me even be allowed to exist in this plane of existence, right? You see what I mean? But none of that ever happened because it's all bullshit on my behalf and my expense so they can get clickbait and you fell for it if you believed any of that stuff and it sucks if you did you know dsp has been suspended from twitch in the past but not permanently but this argument wouldn't hold up because people have done horrible things such as logan paul who's only received temporary punishments and hasn't been arrested for doing terrible things but still is on the platform and is still making lots of money even christian another notorious locale who's currently awaiting trial in prison for heinous crimes has their youtube channel still up and hasn't been banned off the platform Simply because DSP is still able to stream on different platforms does not prove his innocence. DSP would then go on to claim that he is innocent until proven guilty. Thank you guys. Just remember, Scoopula just made a very good point. He says, no evidence at all ever needs to be shown because you don't prove your innocence. Um, you have to prove that someone's guilty. And that's right. In the American court system, you may not live in the United States, but in the American court system, you are innocent until proven guilty. The things people say about me, most of them are not true. Yes, innocence until proven guilty is part of the American truth system, but this is not a coup of law, this is a coup of public opinion. The coup of public opinion is swayed by evidence, but it also relies on the credibility of the person at the center of the drama. Unfortunately for Phil, he lacks credibility outside of his fan base, so he must provide evidence to prove his innocence. In the end, debunking seven years of slander was a disaster. Phil did not provide any evidence to prove his innocence. Everything he addressed he simply said wasn't true or it didn't happen and it didn't sway anyone's opinions. DSP's fans would continue to love him and his detractors would continue to hate him and anyone from the outside looking in would simply just be confused by the situation. In reality, he probably brought more attention to all these topics if he had just not addressed it at all. So Phil may have actually created more detractors by doing this debunking video. As always, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing. And thank you to all my members that support this channel. Incredibly inexpensive, like you spend a dollar here or there to make progress. This one's for all my baby. Champions.